Rock News Weekly Podcast, week of September 30th, 2024, Season 6, Episode 37. This week, we talk about The Cure confirmed their long-awaited new album will be coming out on November 1st. Chester Bennington's mom says she feels betrayed by the new Linkin Park lineup announcement and tour. And Jack White's new Fender guitar and amp collection is revealed and more. Plus, this week in rock and roll history trivia, rock birthdays, the best and worst rock album artwork of the week, and so much more. Everything's up at rocknewsweekly.com. Watch us live every Sunday, twitch.tv slash rocknewsweekly, and on demand, youtube.com at rocknewsweekly. All right. What's up, everybody? It's time for the Rock News Weekly Podcast. Once again, Chris here with David. How's it going, David? Pretty good. Uh, how Pretty was good. the week for you? Um, it was, uh, I'll, yeah, it was good for me, bad for some of my friends. Yeah, you were mentioning yeah. that. So, so. But, but, you know. Well, hopefully it gets better for them. And uh, let's get into the Rock News for the week. We got lots to talk about. And some interesting ones this week, uh, including big announcement from The Cure, their first new album in 16 years. Uh, we got the release date, the name of the album, and the story behind it. They did some kind of like cool stuff where the fan had to do some decoding to figure it out. Did they have um, to use a decoder ring? <laughs> no, but from <laughs> Little Orphan Annie, <laughs> it could be. Who knows? Uh, Jack White's new Fender amp collection, and uh, that's really cool. We're gonna watch a video on that, and he talks all about it. It's it's really revolutionary. You got to stick around for that. And uh, Lincoln Park, uh, that whole lineup announcement and tour that they had. Well, Chester Bennington's mom uh, has some stuff to say about it, how she feels about it. She kind of feels betrayed by the whole thing. Apparently, she felt out of the loop. She didn't hear about it. Uh, she heard about it through the media. Uh, she was supposedly really close with uh, Mike Shinoda. And, so, yeah, she feels kind of betrayed. So we'll talk about that uh, coming up also as well. So rocknewsweekly.com, all socials at Rock News Weekly. Follow us on Twitch, on YouTube, <clears throat> all that good stuff. We got Aftershock uh, confirmed. Real quick for um, uh, media, so I'm putting the feelers out there to see if we can get some um, interviews out there at Aftershock. So I'll keep you guys updated as uh, as that gets closer on the th the 10th through the 13th. Very nice. We're gonna be out there. So speaking of touring, Deftones announcing a big tour for 2025 with hey, good. yeah the Mars Volta <coughs> and Fleshwater. I'm not familiar with Fleshwater. Are you? Uh, familiar with doesn't them? sound very refreshing no like the hot dog flavored water hot, yeah it's like <laughs> flesh water it's flesh water yeah I, I, man that's that's something right that's something well we're, we'll figure it is out that their, is that their sponsor <laughs> it's, it's a drink <laughs> it's got a little skin particles right, in it. like uh, introducing flesh water sponsored by flesh water with electrolytes <laughs> And protein. <laughs> oh my god! Right. I wouldn't be surprised. It's surprised, man. I mean, it kind of does look like a logo like that, right? Like, it sorry, even has like the like you know, there's like water. the clear one and then the yeah. non-clear one. So like the clear one is the water, and yeah, the non-clear one is the flesh. The flesh, and, and they then they should, they should sort of like kind of fade into one another. <laughs> what right? a perfect combo! Yes, <laughs> delicious. Uh. The choice of Hannibal Lecter's <laughs> all over. <laughs> flesh water. Oh, uh, shit. They go everywhere, though. Look at, uh, they g pretty much go to, looks like almost every state. Um, quite a few dates from the end of February through the beginning of April. So, pretty solid. Um, seems like. Yeah, they they're really jumping from place to place. They play a couple There's dates, a like in Texas and a couple in California. In California, but otherwise, it's, they're all over. It's all over. And, yeah. So, anyway, uh, they're coming to you guys next How year. I'm very. How very Sponsored by flesh water. To, yeah. <laughs> 24 date. So there you go. Uh, tour. Uh, Queens of the Stone Age. Speaking of tour dates. Oh, real quick for the Dia de los Deftones. That's coming up on November 2nd. Uh, speaking of Deftones, they do it every year. It's in San Diego. And it's with Sunny Day Real Estate, Health, Idols. It's a cool, like, their own little festival. And Deftones always headline it. It's called nice. Dia, Dia de los Deftones. So check it out. With uh, the uh, Godfathers of Emo. Sponsored playing. by Fleshwater. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Queens of the Stone Age unveil uh, their rescheduled date. So Josh Homey had a medical emergency. Um, it said he was turning into Steve Bannon. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> you can see him changing form right there. <laughs> I, like, I can't contain it. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> poor Joshua May probably like had a really rough thing, and here we are joking. I but know, essential know. medical care, it still doesn't say what it was, um, as far as I know. Um, I don't know what, what it was, but he's he's back. They, and they're going to take place and next they're still going to have their shows in yep. Boston? In, oh, in okay. June of 2025. So, yeah. Boston, Cincinnati, Chicago, Madison. Madison, Wisconsin. There you go. Lovely town. <laughs> so it says, had no choice but to prioritize his health, of, of course. And we ho- hold these guys to a higher standard. Uh, you know, like, oh, you know, you can you can do it. Come on. But, no, that's tough to get up there for two or three hours and yeah. – sing if you feel like shit you know i wouldn't want to do it so anyway right on good to have him back uh or uh back on the road of for next summer yeah it just says emergency surgery he was diagnosed with an unspecified cancer the year prior but a few months later he disclosed that he was cancer free so i don't i don't know maybe it was like cancer came back and had to maybe get like it out of it or something like that flesh like water that's a <laughs> could have, could have been <laughs> Could have drank too much flesh water. Flesh water? And it was a, gr- a growth. <laughs> a growth in internal, like in his in his uh, yeah in his flesh. No, it was actually like a quado, a like qu- a little baby <laughs> uh, that started growing. <laughs> that craved flesh water. Oh my gosh. <laughs> then maybe that's what it is. A little quado. I had to get that guy out Dude, of there. Dude, flesh is that like what's inside of a tumor? Oh <laughs> no! Let's not dissect it. No, too much. don't that's, dissect it. Uh, oh no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, yeah there's right. your there's your rescheduled dates, guys. Uh June tenth and eleventh, Boston. Um and then Cincinnati on the eighteenth, Madison, uh Wisconsin, twentieth, Chicago, twenty first for Queens and Stone Age Stone Age. So there you go. Uh all right, what else we got? This one, you hear about this one? Weird Al. No. Yes. Weird Al has announced a huge tour of the US. Uh Puddles Pity Party. Have you ever heard of them? It's no. like a. I think you'd enjoy uh, seeing something from it. It's a guy that's dressed as a clown, like a full, like nineteen. It looks like a nineteen fifties like style clown, and he like sings like crooning songs, like <laughs> like crooning <laughs> covers. Like Michael of songs. Buble kind of. Yeah, I, I don't know how to describe it. I got. Sh- it's like it's it's pretty wild. It's it's kind of crazy. So it's perfect for weird al <laughs> yeah yeah the people are gonna like it so uh look at this they're kicking it off in vegas um it's so it says the the this is the best of both worlds tour we'll be doing the big crowd pleasing parodies as well as some deep cuts for the hardcore fans but with twice as many players on stage everything is going to sound twice as good haha <laughs> uh polka mania uh is the new single it arrived around the 10th anniversary of his most recent studio album, Mandatory Fun. So here's the picture. It's like he's Godzilla. It's kind of funny. What's he got? Oh, he's got a, a bus. Like a bus, One of those yeah. accordion-centered buses. <coughs> yeah, that's pretty clever. The, uh, is that the Empire State Building? Or the Chrysler Building? Yeah. He is an accordion player. So he's got the four-night run Venetian, or five-night run, excuse me. At the Venetian, and check out all these these dates here, man. West Valley City, Utah. So I wonder if my uncle lives in West Valley City. Maybe he'll go see Weird Al Yankovic, and he does like Weird Al. You should tell him. Yeah. Look at there. He goes all over. This is a massive tour for him. Wow. Look at. This. I mean, how old is he now? He's like in his almost his seventies. That's isn't a good he? question. I mean, and he's, he's well, just. I mean, yeah. isn't he just? He's just ripped. I know he cartwheels looks, on stage and like uh, costume changes. He does like yeah, eight costume changes usually on 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 the tour. Look at we get one of Modesto. No way. Yeah, at the fruit yard. No way. I'm there. Yeah. Uh, Heck yeah. Uh, the fruit yard, August twenty third. So, all these dates, man. You got to give it to Weird Al. I mean, I mean, you think about it though. Shit. Who's bigger than Weird Al? For 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 uh, you know I don't know Bruce Springsteen somebody like that I don't know I mean <laughs> I don't know the I reach mean, that Weird Al has maybe had the is qu- comparable to Bruce yeah. Springsteen it really Who's is like cooler amazing. than we- Weird Al nobody <laughs> maybe somebody's bigger but no you're right the, I mean the reach is 
it's unbelievable. And the staying power, and he's like a good. And I mean, he's dude. he's like a. I mean, he's not on the Diddy party yeah. list. <laughs> no, right? And he's well, and he's not like a drunk, druggy guy or whatever. Yeah, didn't, didn't throw his life away. And I don't he's know. He's just like a hardworking, yeah, good performer. Look at him. He's fun, you know, destroying cities, right? <laughs> just you know, crushing yeah. people. He has a train full of flesh water. Yep. That's full of he's drinking the flesh water. Drinking the flesh water straight from out the of train. that. That's his uh yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh so there you go. Yeah, good stuff. All right. Uh big tour from Weird Out. Now we got into the rock news, the big story of the week. The cur- the cure confirming November first is the uh release date, their long awaited new album, Songs of a Lost World. They sent out mysterious postcards to fans. That seem to indicate their new album, Songs of a Lost World, will finally get released November 1st. The postcards, real quick, just had, like, you just looked at it un- with a black light. And there was, like, some numbers and dashes oh, okay. and stuff. And people, like, figured it out that it pointed to November 1st. And they're like, huh, okay, what does that mean? Well, it's true. After 16 years, The Cure is back. Their 14th studio album, Songs of a Lost World. And here's the thing. It was recorded during their 90-date, 33-country Shows of a Lost World tour for more than 1.3 million people. They recorded it, like, and they kind of previewed it uh, back then. Nobody knew, like, they knew it was new music. and they, So they were, like, playing a new song here, right? a new song there. Yep, and people were like, ooh, okay, that's a n- I haven't heard that one. Wonder what that's from. But they didn't talk about it at all. Like, just basically, here's a new one, you know, here's something new. And so now it's part of this album. After 16 years, they got it. And uh, the opening track alone, Robert Smith says, quote, it's the track that unlocked the record. As soon as we had that piece of music recorded, I knew it was the opening song and I felt the whole album come into focus. That was when the moment when I knew the song and the album were real. He created the sleeve concept. Check this artwork out. It's pretty cool. Uh, The sleeve concept and Andy Vela, a longtime Cure collaborator, handled the album's art and design. The cover art features Bagatelle, or Bagatelli, I'm not, I think it's Bagatelle, a 1975 sculpture by Janez Pernant. Pernant, sorry. Pernant. <laughs> what do you think of that that's, artwork? That's interesting. It's like the, <clears throat> the sort of like raw uh, stone and then a face sort of emerging from... Yep. The bottom there. The face is really smooth, and the yeah. stone is, like, all kind of, yeah. Rough. Yep. It, uh, it would be like if Robert Smith, with his crazy hair, was set into stone and preserved. It'd be yeah. like, oh, that's Robert Smith. Well, that's hair. a very, like, that's a very iconic yeah. image. It's like, uh, yeah. I don't know, what is, like, the, the, some, like, Nine Inch Nails album back yeah. in the day that had the twisted like coil on it or whatever right. that was right that's yeah like it's like uh it's one of those things and like we were saying I, I like the ones where you could see it from a distance and it's just yeah. like you and know it what really it is is like oh yeah yeah I know like that album. yeah that's it stands out so good choice from the cure man this is this looks cool and I'm, I'm excited to hear it first new album in 16 years um definitely impressive so good for them glad he was inspired to yeah. do that yeah yeah i'm excited about that um, all right, this is a little sad and kind of frustrating, I'm sure, for her to deal with. Chester Bennington's mom, Susan Eubanks. So this is in a new story from Rolling Stone uh, that just got uh, released and published this past week. And this is like her version of it. So there's been like some like response to it uh, that, you know, this is kind of like one side of the coin the way that she okay. feels but i feel that it is being <clears throat> it's a it's a valid point sh- that she makes and if what she says is like kind of true then I, I feel i feel for her so yeah so this is let's get into it um i don't have the whole article but i did get a good chunk of it because it is a long article <coughs> so definitely <clears throat> check it out for you guys yourselves on rolling stone so earlier this month just to, to recap if you guys aren't familiar um New vocalist was put in for Linkin Park. They announced concerts. Uh, Dead Sarah's Emily Armstrong would be singing his parts. Kicked off in L.A. September 11th. Bands gave... uh, uh, It was a mixed reaction to the announcement. So one person uh, that we're talking about here, Susan Eubanks, had really strong feelings about it. 
Um, she was Bennington's mother. In a phone interview with Rolling Stone, she says the band promised to notify her if it had any inkling of moving forward. She had run into the group's other vocalist, Mike Shinoda, in recent years, as well as its turntablist, Joe Hahn, but says neither mentioned anything about a reunion. When she learned of the announcement, she felt sudden shock. Says, we are thrilled to be back out here, Shinoda said at a recent concert. It's not about erasing the past. It's about starting this new chapter in the future and coming out here for each and every one of you. Eubanks disagrees. Here, in her own words, is how she has been feeling since the band has moved forward. A representative for Linkin Park did not respond to a request for comment for this story. So what do you think of that so far before we actually get into her statement here? Well, I mean, sh- that is a pretty important I to dot. I would know? think so. And, and for her to come out, I feel like, and say this kind of, you know, make these statements now to Rolling Stone, it this this reunion thing could not be handled any worse. Yeah, I mean, it's like <laughs> that kind of thing just seems really half-assed. Like, come on. Okay, so let's get into the statement here. It says, <clears throat> excuse me. I saw Mike Shinoda about two years ago. He promised to tell the family what was going on. And he did reach out when they were going to release some songs with Chester on them that they had that they were new, that were new. He let Samantha, which is Chester's ex-wife, and Draven know. I think that's his son. Then Samantha let me know. He tried very hard to recreate a relationship with Samantha. She was willing to do that. They didn't talk about Chester's death. They talked about Chester's life. And that was very important that she would call me and let me know that they talked about how is he doing? How's the family doing? It was all of us. She told him that she has regular conversations with me and Draven as well. And that if he wanted to tell her something, she would be sure to tell me. And he said, okay, in a statement to Rolling Stone following the publication of this article, Samantha Bennington, Chester's ex-wife, disputes Eubanks' version of the events, saying in a phone call, I have not spoken with Mike Shinoda since I was married to Chester. I have not seen him prior to my divorce in 2005. So that's quite a, it's almost 20 Uh, years ago. Yeah. So she's not involved in any way and hasn't talked to Mike Shinoda says, I believe my mother-in-law is mixing up bands between Lincoln Park and Grey Days. Grief and sadness messes with your memory. So those are two different bands that Chester Benning- Bennington was in, Lincoln Park and Grey Days. So maybe she is mixing that up a little bit, but let's go on. She, she makes the, the further statement here. This is um, Susan Eubanks, my, um, Chester Bennington's mom. She says, quote, I found out about Emily Armstrong joining the band on Google. When I go to Google to look for something, the first thing that pops up is Linkin Park, and I saw the whole thing of we have an announcement that whole week. They were at the top if you enter anything into Google. I actually thought maybe the band was going to back out, but that Mike would be the singer. Chester did teach Mike how to sing. He sang on a song in 2017's One More Light that I thought was beautiful until Chester died. Then I couldn't listen to it anymore. I thought if they were to go back out, it would just be the band not ad- adding a singer. So I tuned into live stream when it happened, not on purpose. I thought her singing, I don't even remember what it is she was singing because I didn't want to hear it. It was just a moment, but it was her, and I'm just going to say it, screeching her way through a very high note. And I got out of there as fast as I could. And then she says, I cried. Mike told Chester one time that he thought singing these songs would be better with a girl because he often put Chester down. And Chester called me and said, quote, he thinks that they're going to replace me with a girl. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, Mike told him at rehearsal that if you decide you're leaving, we're going to replace you with a girl. And Chester was dumbfounded and hurt. So real quick before we go further, she's like giving some history saying that this was already in the works of the band. And he actually threatened Chester Bennington that if you don't like it i'm just gonna replace you with a girl or whatever almost like an insult or like a, a thing to keep over his head it's kind of crazy right and then and then lo and having, behold having said that and now that the that, plan is into motion bit, right yeah okay so and then she pretty ugly and she continues here chester pennington's mom quote here uh susan eubanks and the fact is now they did it so of course all that comes right back into my mind I had a talk with my son about this. I didn't think they'd probably do it. Like I said, I thought Mike would go out and sing the songs and they just wouldn't sound the same. They wouldn't be as high or loud and wouldn't be, it would just be very different. 
And I would have been okay with that, but I'm not okay with this, to have somebody replace him and to try and do what he did. I don't think that there's anybody in the world that has the same voice. And when I heard that, I was just so repelled that, no, they're trying to do exactly what Chester did, but they're not succeeding at it. So that's the end of the quote. So what do you think of that? Uh, yeah, I mean, if that's all true, that that's really kind of damning. That's gross. Yeah, and for the mom of Chester, who's had these private conversations that Chester was, like, confiding in her, um, that, Mom, you know, I'm worried they're going to kick me out of the band. They said they were going to replace me with a girl, and then look what they do on, you know, on this, you know, reunion or reformation. So I feel like there's some definite truth there, and it sucks if that's the case. Yeah. Um, and I feel like Linkin Park could have, handled this so much better and done it the right way and it, i don't know why they chose to do it this way yeah um i mean i guess in some ways it makes me happy i was never a fan yeah i mean <laughs> you I'm, know me but too, i mean if i was a fan this would be one of those things i think that would be uh i just w i would want very wanna, political and i'd want to bury my head in the sand yeah. and not even see it i hate it when like bands that i like like pink floyd and stuff for example yeah whenever i see david and roger like kind of spat at each other in the press i'm just like man i don't even want to see it because it's just so it's, embarrassing yeah. i feel like embarrassed you know and if i was a lincoln park fan i'd i'd hate to say it i'd feel kind of embarrassed the way that this is turning out yeah yeah um and it's sad to say because i know mike shinoda is a good guy from what i've known about him you know little stuff like he's on twitch he seems like a really decent guy and i'm sure the other guys in the group just want to get some cash and you know want to work it but just seems personal like that's yeah the trouble if the, now that this stuff is coming out from her she's saying these things and it makes it feel like it is that kind of like a personal thing and maybe there was some kind of bad blood there you know with the whole situation so i don't know We'll see what happens with this announcement uh, hitting the press and if Linkin Park want to respond. Yeah. Back, yeah. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully Mike Shinoda, like, I don't know, responds in a nice way, but we'll see. All right. This is the cool story of the week. I got to say, as a guitar player, um, you don't get a lot of innovation in the industry too often that it feels like significant um significant changes in the way that things are going and like amps for example it's just like one of those things that doesn't get a lot of innovation yeah especially with big companies i will say boutique amp companies are good with innovation but bigger companies like fender especially it's surprising for them to like go in and like rework everything for like a custom type of a thing what they're what we're about to see and it's a really cool thing i'm just gonna let the video play this whole jack white thing is really cool and he does a much better job of explaining it than i do so check it out um this is really a, a an innovative and cool thing that he does and i'm i'm just blown away by this amp and the guitar and all this stuff check it out here's jack white talking about it himself. <laughs> hey, it's Jack White here, here to showcase these new designs that I worked on with Fender. This is the triple caster guitar, the Pano Verb amp, and over there, and right here, the triple sonic, acoustasonic guitar. I'm going to take you through them a little bit and show you what we put together. We sort of found the best of the old with the best of the new and mixed innovation with the history of Fender and did something uh, that we think maybe Leo Fender would be very proud of if he was alive today. And I think he still is. I'll take you through the panel verb first. I had an amazing time with Fender designing this. We worked on this for four or five years, and this was sort of like me shooting for the moon of what the ultimate Fender amplifier could be or just the ultimate amplifier could be. They allowed me to design a lot of elements and work together with Fender to try to make something really beautiful and unique that Fender's never done before. Stan Cody put together the first prototype amp of this, and we went from there. Let's take you to the amp section first. Somewhere in here, you've got a Fender Vibroverb, 1964 Vibroverb, is in the heart of this amplifier. It was my favorite Fender amp, and I've used it for years. But I was thinking, you know, what are these things I could make into this sort of dream Fender amp? 
And one thing was having a drive boost knob. I like drive and preamping, but I, I don't really like distortion in amplifiers too much. A lot of, a lot of modern amps have this, sort of these distortion knobs. Well, this gives you an amazing boost without getting too distorted. I, of course, always missed the middle knob in certain Fender amps that I love. If they only had treble and bass, it was a bummer for me because I love to cut the mids a little bit in my signal. And I think a lot of people obviously love to have the three choices. So we have a 15-inch speaker here and a 10-inch speaker here. Two different size speakers, not exactly something you've ever seen in a Fender amp before, and definitely not in those sizes. The sound of that is outstanding because double micing this, you get the deep, bassier crunch on the 15, you get the brighter, uh, glassier tones in the 10-inch. In the and when you stereo mic these and pan them, your, your, your stereo image is just outstanding, even before you talk about reverb and tremolo on this amp, which I'll get to. Okay, uh, let me show you a little bit of the amp section here. Drive knob is off. Drive on about halfway up. The reverb section, you're going to see me very happy as I talk about this. This is just the dream reverb scenario uh, for a Fender amp, in my opinion, or for any amplifier. There was a Fender amp in the early 90s called the Vibro King, and I thought that was really cool because what they did is they took a Fender reverb unit, like the standard surf box reverb unit, and they put it in a combination amp with a dwell knob and a mix knob and a tone knob. The difference between our version of that compared to the Vibro King is the Vibro King came before the preamp, section this reverb session comes after the preamp section and it's just beautiful how much energy it has the decay goes on forever it's just so so beautiful and long and deep and what we've done here instead of having a tone knob is we have a treble and bass knob so you can control just the treble and bass of the reverb signal now you've never seen that on a fender amp before no doubt about that so if you like a really bassy reverb you know, you can turn the bass up and turn the treble down. If you like a really surfy, twangy reverb, you can turn the treble up on the on reverb section. How cool is that? And that really comes in handy live and in the studio. The switch here on the end is also going to blow your mind. It's split and full. Full has the reverb coming through both these speakers, and split has it only coming through the 10-inch speaker. So if you have two microphones on a twin reverb, say, you're probably not getting much of a different sound unless there's a, a flaw in one of the speakers. If you have two microphones on this panel verb, you're going to get two different speaker sounds, two different speaker sizes, so they both have different characteristics and the ability to put reverb only in the 10-inch side. Turn the reverb on. I'm going to show a bassy. Isn't that, like, just real quick, like, how innovative and cool is that, right? Yeah. To be able to get a company like Fender to be able to kind of accommodate that type of stuff is just really neat. And then, yeah, check it out. He'll demonstrate. Reverb it. now. Treble turned down, bass up, and we'll have it in full mode. Coming, Coming through both speakers. <laughs> Trebly reverb. <laughs> Bass and treble tone turned all the way up on the reverb in split mode. Reverb's only coming through the 10 inch now. on this reverb is just outstanding. It just goes on for days and it's so beautiful and rolling. I just love it. All right, we're gonna go to the tremolo section now. This is the first harmonic tremolo that Fender has done in an amplifier since the early 60s. I had this harmonic tremolo in my 61 vibersonic and I really love the sound of it. Almost like you know, it's opening up high and low pass filters rather than just amplitude modulation of volume going up and down. So we wanted to get that sound in here, you know, and you have two modes here. You have a mono and stereo mode. 
So there's two amp sections in here that drive this stereo mode. In the mono mode, you're kind of more like the regular Fender tremolo. Amplitude modulation, two speakers going up and down in volume, but it's still harmonic tremolo. In stereo mode, you have a little bit of delay separation between these two. So you've got this stereo image that has this swampy wah, 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 going back and forth with left and right. The intensity all the way up and the speed down in this stereo mode, you can hear the, the movement. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to leave the reverb section in split mode here and get this in stereo mode on tremolo. Listen to that decay. Let me show you the mono section of the tremolo unit. Here's the same chord in stereo. You get the speed down low and you get the intensity up, you get the nice swampy. So great. And I'd like to take you through some of the small aesthetic details of this amp. One that I'm very proud of is how many times have any Fender player spent a minute looking for the power switch and standby switches? Well, you know exactly where they are on this amp. You have this lightning bolt indicator to show you right where the power switch is. Wow. You're welcome. We have this great yellow, white, and black artwork here. Our Fender's never done this color on an amplifier before. This is a cool little co-brand here with Third Man Hardware. The knobs are pretty interesting. These were like Fender prototype metal knobs in the early 60s. I guess they just used them for a little while and they didn't catch on, but I had it on an old Fibersonic, and I thought it would be nice to bring that back. What's even interesting too here, each section, the first knob clicks on and off. So if, let's say you, uh, you have your reverb turned to zero on a, on a twin reverb, and you assume it's off, you know. This is not the case with this. The first knob in each section clicks off and has a zero spot. So you definitely know in the studio, you don't even want to worry about it. You've clicked it off. It's, it's set in stone. So the intensity on the tremolo is turned off. The mix of the reverb is turned off. The drive is turned off. The input here is only one input. This has a number three instead of a one or a two. This is a little third man hardware flare to it. The foot switch, also unique, and you've never seen it before, a yellow foot switch on a Fender amp. But that's just a kind of cool aesthetic part. But what I really am proud of is for years, I've always wanted to put my switch for the amp up by my pedal board, but the wire always came out of the middle. Well, we got this one to come out the side, so now you can wrap that quite around and have it right next to your pedal board without it being funky and feeling backward. See, those are the little things that's like, it's a true, like, it comes from a place of like playing your instrument for so long that you have these things like, why is it? built this way yeah. why did they put the cord right in the middle it doesn't make any sense right like and then to to have these innovations like this and just the little indicator where the power cord is it's stuff that they don't think about that at you as a musician you think about it and yeah. you're like the in the little subtleties with the uh turning it off to make sure that it's yeah when you have it down like when you're in a studio setting sometimes you never know it could just be up a fraction just of a, a, fraction. a little hair yeah and you know so it's it's cool to have that stuff, man. He does like such a it's, that's a tiny cool innovation that. I think is really right, last really cool, here. and I hope Fender keeps that for other amplifiers. This amp comes with a uh, yellow and black canvas cover instead of naga hide. I'm an upholsterer by trade, you know, and uh, I love the feel of certain fabrics, and I wanted to have something a little bit different. The yellow uh, jewel light here to make this a little bit special, coming to factory standard. Uh, air conditioning and pizza oven also factory standard. <laughs> <laughs> yellow fender amp logo which is very cool and, and to go with the whole collection here the guitar cases also have this exact same yellow logo on them which i think is a cool little uh, marriage of these products uh, that we collab together <laughs>
right, cool. Yeah, so very nice. good stuff, right? I mean, I, I just love the innovation there. Uh, just uh, it's it's you know. I know Jack White's one of those musicians that some people feel a certain way well, about him or whatever. You know, not not for me, not my style, whatever. You can't deny the guy's creativity and, uh, you know, I don't know how else to say it, like innovation that, that he does with whatever he does. Uh, just cool stuff. I can't wait. I, I'd love to get that amp, man. I've been in the market for actually uh, a guitar amp for a couple years now i wanted to get a, a nice upgrade good quality one that has a lot of versatility that's well made i'm sure it's going to be a nice price tag on that bad boy but that's pretty awesome uh, i love it so there's the little collection guys check it out um does it have uh, it doesn't have the prices here so i, sh I should have done that <laughs> oh well i'm sure you, if you're interested you can check it out and deal with that all right talking heads uh deluxe reissue of their debut album never been done before cool box set comes with a book the, the the book is what i'm interested in checking out here as well as some they have some um singles that are apparently on this too so check this out it's a four lp box set <clears throat> but uh it has the original album on one lp but another lp is filled with rare and previously unreleased demos and outtakes which Sounds really cool. I've never heard those. The jewel of this, though, is the 2LP live set featuring a previously unreleased performance from that era. Live at CBGB's, New York, October 10th, 1977, which the band says is a live recording of the final gig at CBGB's. Wow, iconic. That's pretty cool, right? And it also includes four 7-inch singles uh, highlighted by a newly released acoustic version of Psycho Killer, featuring Arthur Russell, along with an 80-page hardcover book featuring photos, memorabilia, liner notes, handwritten by members David Byrne, Tina Weymouth, Chris France, and Jerry Harrison. Pretty cool, right? That's interesting, uh, an acoustic version of Psycho Killer. Yep. That that doesn't that that sounds different. Well, it's in when he played it, uh, if you ever saw the the video of um, Stop Making Sense, he opens the concert with an acoustic version of it, I guess, because that's how he wrote the song. But it oh, wasn't okay. It wasn't like, you know, the one we hear on the album is not acoustic. Which is very not. Like, right. I mean, that's kind of talking heads sort of like... Yeah. You you don't think of acoustic. Right. No, much, you're right. You know? Because they're very, like, electric and electric kind of... Yeah, and, like yeah, a band. Sort of like new yep. agey kind of thing. Yep. That All that new wave that was going on. But, new, no, yeah, so it, it's cool. It's, it sounds like that was the... The, the 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 beginning of of that song so they're doing an acoustic version of it pretty cool and i mean that's a definitive uh box set i like it when they have like stuff like an unreleased concert you know like that's a real treat for the fans to be able to get that uh so very cool thanks for putting that out there talking heads that's cool i still have hope that we'll get a talking heads reunion you know it could happen all right we got some birthdays to get to let's do it all right take it away man all right uh these are the birthdays for uh, uh, se uh sorry september 24th through the 30th yeah uh, on the 26th cesar rojas or rosas of los lobos was born in 1954 uh, Craig Chiquico of Jefferson Starship was born in 1954 on the 26th. Brian Ferry was born in 1945 on the 26th. Avril Lavigne. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, was born in 1984. Oh, she's two years younger than That's yeah, right. Yeah. Stephen Jenkins, Third Eye Blind, born in 1964 on the 27th. Randy Bachman of BTO, or guess who, was born in 1943 on the 27th. Les Claypool, Primus, born 1983. Oh, really? that is not Yeah, correct. I was going to say. Hmm. I, I think that's supposed to say 1963. 1963 sounds about yeah. right. All right. Um, born on the 28th, <laughs> 1963. Yeah. Um, George Lynch of Dokken was born in 1955 on the 28th. Yeah. Um, I heard not nothing against uh, Dokken, but I heard that their, their latest show was 
not that great. I had a coworker that went to uh, the show, and she's like, "They should just hang it up." It was she. She felt embarrassed when she saw it. Really? And I was like, "Oh my god, it was that bad, huh?" She and was she's docks like, and docking. She's like, "The best band on the bill was Winger," and I was like, "That must have been." a bad show if winger was the best band there like <laughs> <laughs> nothing against winger either but i guess she was saying like they blew him out of the water and she couldn't believe it and they weren't even the headliner and anyway Dang. so yeah some of these guys man you know they try and hang on and but you start putting those subpar shows out there and people are just like you know not not having it anyway continue uh, josh referro of paramore born in 1987 he's a youngin yeah really it's, but I guess it's not so surprising. I know. We're they getting to that new generation of yeah. new rockers, right? Brad Smith of Blind Melon, born in 1968. Yep. Uh, Robbie Takak of the Goo Goo Dolls, 1964. I think that's it. All right, yeah. All right. Now we got some uh, trivia. Let's do it. This week in rock and roll history, trivia. It is. It's time for some trivia. Trivia time. September 30th, 1993. George Harrison and this musician play their animated selves on season five premiere of The Simpsons, Homer's Barbershop Quartet. What was the other musician? Was it Ringo Starr? Was it Steven Tyler? Was it Paul McCartney? Or was it David Cocaine Crosby? Um, I wanted to be Steven Tyler, so I'm going to choose Steven you Tyler. You wanted to be Steven yeah. Tyler? <laughs> I just like a Simpsons version of Steven Tyler. That would be good. I think he may have been on there at that time, but it's actually David Cocaine Crosby. Well, what <laughs> else? Yes. I should have known because there was know. no innovation. No, on the, no wacky name no there. No wacky name there. That, that might, that might that be the your, giveaway. That was your, your tell. i got to be careful now. Yeah, I'll but. beat you. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they played uh, them, themselves, and they were at the office. Oscars or whatever, they 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 played like there was a scene where they were the Simpsons were at the Oscars Aus- or the Grammys or whatever. It's amazing how they really yeah. can make their I know people look like I mean the Simpsons don't they it's look like they're such cartoony <laughs> like very but you're but like they capture they the essence, capture right? the essence like and yeah. it's still cartoony I know like that's wild it's great Simpsons are so good with that so yeah there you go uh, David Crosby George very good Harrison. very good all right best and work or excuse me best and worst album artwork. From the new rock and metal vinyl releases out this week. David, what do we All got right, here? We've got Amity Affliction, Let the Ocean Take Me. Oh, my God. Oh, holy moly. Is, do you think that? that okay. Just let that the is, ocean take me. Do you know me. what that is? What? That's flesh water. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> that's what happens. That's where they it get flesh looks, water. Look at You can see it. Aren't there like little bait He's the, breaking off? Yes. That's it's already soggy. That's the flesh water um, that's the, supplier uh, or the, the corpse. Supplier, I don't yeah. know. Or no, it's the uh, the concentrate. You have to add. It's from concentrate. Maybe they have that on the bottle. Like this flesh water, not from, from concentrate. concentrate or from concentrate. Uh, good stuff. Arcona Stella. What is that? Stella Pandora. Yeah. Okay. Are those mosquitoes? They look like dragonflies. They dragonflies. I they think. look like mad. Or maybe evil they're like locusts. Flies. Maybe they're locusts. Um, Arcona. I can't read Arcona on there very well. I know. Uh, I see. Like, it looks like <laughs> that's the typical like Lots metal, metal yeah. stuff. But that's pretty cool. I, I kind of like it. Pretty good, I guess. Uh, it's got it, the kind of it's uh, creative. I guess it's kind of different. Yeah, I don't know. It it does give me the sort of like uh, pseudo like Hindu or Buddhist kind of thing. It like, reminds which, me of Medusa too. Yeah, it's like, like it's uh, a combination of Medusa and the Buddha, so which I'm like, <laughs> who are you trying to offend here? Medusta. Yeah, Medusta. The Medusta. <laughs> in reaching enle- enlightenment. Um, awake! The Dreamer. Holocene. Oh, look at awake this. It's like two sides yeah. of the brain or One personality. One side is a human, the other side is a broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool looking, I guess. It's cool, but it, it, it's also one of those ones where it's just at a little... Little too con- I don't know too straightforward. Books. Conceptual. This is like their books all over the ground. So this is like literally, you know how I was talking about last week. It was like the Page Master. It on looks that like one. a children's novel. Yeah, it looks like, like a children's novel. You know, like oh yeah, like choose your own adventure. Or Which something. hey, that's kind of a nice turn. I guess yeah, yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I'll take it. it. Is a choose your own adventure. You there can you go, go that right? way or the other. Yeah, the burning. Like, maybe that's maybe that's part of the whole thing. 
Could That's be. That's kind of cool. All right. Um, the bad, uh, the bad ups, life of sin. Yeah. Uh, I like the that one gives me a nice feeling. For I like some it. Reason. It's like a trash can with flowers in it and a little. Yeah. Beer bottle. It's I think I cool. would kind of take away the the thing where it says the life of sin. I don't like that. <laughs> right. But but the rest of it. But the really rest of kind of gives me a nice feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Uh, Bewitcher, spell shock. It's not shell shock. It's spell shock. Spell shock, shock brother. It's clever. it's clever. Hey, so let's see. Upside down crosses. Upside down crosses. Uh, Raiden like, electricity yeah, from Mortal Kombat. From Mortal Kombat, or it's like a combination of Mortal Kombat and uh, Star Wars. Yes. Emperor sure. Palpatine there. <laughs> Actually, or it's just Emperor Palpatine. Sure. Right. Yeah, and yeah, he's in the yeah, dark metal band. Yeah, now. he's in the dark metal band yeah. now. That's uh, and and also I really hope his levitation grave. works really well because if if it like all of a sudden gave out, he would be impaled. Yes. By a very blunt object. <laughs> right. Well, you fall right on that he'd grave. Fall right of, on that grave right uh, there. Whatever that is. Oh, he, is that like a breaking hole? up? Yeah. Like yeah. Is he gonna fall? Oh, in? Or did he come out of it? Came out he of came, the grave. He just levitated out of there. We figured it out, guys. Okay. I. You know what? This one's good because it has a story. Yeah. I like the story on it this. It is, one. and I like the artwork too. Yeah. It's not bad. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That's a cool logo or whatever for the. He's levitating. The, uh, you got in the, the in the background. Name. It's sort of like a like Hogwarts. That. I almost thought building. it was like a um, like th- these City. were w- wings of a dragon or something, but I don't think so. I think this is a a moon. Oh. But I thought yeah, it was yeah. wings at first, but I think it's a this is a moon. It's a moon. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. It's oh like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Hogwarts it does give Academy. You that sort of wings of a dragon feeling. <laughs> yeah, but it's dragon Hogwarts. You're right. There's a dragon there, isn't there? Yeah. Or is that just a griffin? I don't know. I don't, or a, I don't uh, remember. a hippogriff. A hippogriff. That's what they're called. Yeah, that's a. Uh, oh yeah. God. All right. Black Dahlia murder, servitude. That's kind of cool. Like it's a big hole in the water. Kind of looks like a <laughs> butthole. <laughs> like uh, all the ships are going in there. They're going in there, and they're gonna get all mixed up and make some new batch of fresh water, fresh flesh water. <laughs> that's how the. That's, that's how they. The that's the source water. region yeah. for flesh water. Distillery. Yeah, the, <laughs> the flesh water <laughs> distillery. <laughs> um, destroy, rebuild until God shows. Until God shows, I th- I don't know if that's the the band name and that's an error or if that's I'm destroy, not sure. Destroy, rebuild until God shows. But yeah, I wonder. I, um, the I, think, uh, I look. It looks like destroy, rebuild might destroy, be the band rebuild. name, and then but I can't really tell. Well, look at there's like some little like little those daggers, wavy, like little wavy daggery <laughs> things from then, uh, Aladdin. Uh, right. right, the dad, yes. the little thief in Aladdin, and then there's thorns here and the hand holding. Yeah, I mean, I like Very this idea. I um, destroy, rebuild, are, do you, are, and it's called until God shows. And then they also have like the uh, the uh, handshake going on there. Yeah, That's a little bit of a. It's and very the, the sort two of fingers. The touching. fingers touching, very sort of uh, maybe a salute. Mason, Freemason, salute sort to of Mormon Mon. sort of thing. It's the Paimon hand, the Paimon handshake. Hand sh- handshake. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, very, well. very old timey yeah. religiosity kind of a thing. Um, Harry Ott devoured by the mouth of hell. Wow. <laughs> Just straight to the point. There you go. Devoured by the mouth of hell. Uh, uh, I don't yeah. know. I, I don't like that I can't very much s- either. I can't tell what it is. At I can't all. really tell either. Maybe I should make it bigger. But is it? That's what she said. Um, <laughs> let's. <see. laughs> uh, yeah. What is it? It looks like. Well, I think we're looking at the mouth of hell. Um. I think do you think do you think that anyone is <laughs> going to respond? Picture. Yeah, do you think anyone's going to respond to this by like changing their album artwork? They're like, "Well, Chris and David yeah, didn't shit. like it, so damn." Yeah, now because on this one, do, I'm guys? like, "What were you thinking, guys? <laughs> now they you thought we were going to like this. You think we're going to take this kind of abuse? We don't even know what that is." All right, guys, pull the records from the shelves. Pull them from the shelves. Rock News Weekly told us it's yeah. horrible. But I mean, I guess there's some like, is that some like uh, ones and zeros? Is that what's in there? No, is this, it looks like, like are a, we... this is a brick. It looks like a brick thing okay. here. Okay, so it's a, like an archway. And all then, right. Yeah, all then right. this oh, is so like it is. superimposed it is the, it is flames. the mouth of hell. Yeah. So the... And then all this right. is like, uh, yeah. The so gateway. basically, they're just Stargate. like, look, this is a cool door. Yeah. It's even in our town. <laughs> Isn't that cool? It's like even here. There you go. So that we cracked Her- the code. And it's called Herod? That's the name of their band? Uh, or Harriot. Harriot. Okay. <laughs> All right. I thought it was like Harriot. I was like, dude, yeah. 
<laughs> uh, Mirror Queen, Dying Days. And, you know, it's a good sort well, of... It looks like the 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 brain people from that When Mars Attacks Oh, movie. my gosh. Or do you ever watch that <laughs> show called Alien Nation back in the 80s? Like, the oh. early 80s, and there's, like, people with bigger yeah, heads that were yeah. dotted. And they were, like, living their life with all the regular Just a regular humans. alien human Yeah, they were, like, and they would, like, have boyfriends that were human. And do you think that's this right had, like, It was, like, interracial <laughs> sort of, like, kind of marriage topical. thing. Topical. Yeah, it was topical. <laughs> it was cool. <laughs> Um, I, I have to say like, that doesn't, that doesn't look comfortable. That hair? That clothes. Cause I'm oh, assuming that that's like kind of metal. Like her clothes look oh, like yeah, they're made like of little... brass. <laughs> and so, I mean, the late princess Leia bikini yeah, never got right. into like the thong sort of situation. Yeah. Which I think would be really that's uncomfortable. That's a good point. These are, metal great, thong. these are great points. We need to figure this stuff I, out. I, I, it's just, well, I just not doing it for me. I don't believe it. Yeah. I just don't believe it. It's, it's fake. It's what fake. A, this is fake. A, yeah. I, we want real. Yeah. Okay? What is this? What like, is this? uh, like page master like, or whatever. Um, like oceans, like a dead happy. fish in a, in a fish bowl. Yeah. Is that, there's like craters on the fish's body. Is there not? I don't know. I like, guess it's I'm like, getting, it's, 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 it's it looks the, like a to- topographical, some type sort of, of fish or yeah, it looks maybe like it's Mordor, like, like, you know, in, you know, the mountain in, uh, yeah. the Hobbit, uh-huh. it kind of looks like that mountain, but it's a fish. <laughs> Okay, and it's I'm not gonna make a flesh water. Oh, joke. and then there's like a um, like a satanic pi- is that what pi- it is? Pimon symbol pi- back symbol here. I don't know. Back. And then um, yeah, like you're uh, stuck in this fish bowl. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. No, like, but it's, happy. It's cool. I get what they're trying to do. Like they're saying, like you, this is miserable, right? Yeah, like, to be a fish in a fish bowl. You know, and the band is called Oceans. Yeah. So I mean, I wonder, like, the what's the, actually? I know. It, actually, I do kind of like this because they are playing with some, some symbolism and mm-hmm. meaning in a way that you could kind of, it's accessible enough that you could interpret it. Yeah. Right. They're called Oceans, and then they're saying happy, and then they are showing a fish bowl with a very miserable looking fish. <laughs> right. So it's kind of like the idea of like there is so much more. Yeah. Right. There's much more. There's there are that is oceans. Sad. Wouldn't, right? wouldn't there that are be oceans, sad? but then we we f- we feel happy. Yeah. In our get out of your fish bowl. Bowls, right. Get we need our fish structuring fish bowls. You need to get out into the ocean. Our boundaries. We need to get out in the ocean. So there you go. So See? that's the true happiness. That's a deep, ah, yeah. That's I'm, a deep, I'm I'm okay with that. Um, kind of nice. Um, our hollow, our home, hope and hell. Little like swirlies, a, little symbols. What are those like rune rune symbols Runes. or something? I don't know. And yeah. they're kind of like look like they're glowing because someone just poured blood in like the right spot or something, <laughs> right? Right. Yes, and finally, yes. the blood like trickled to all the right spots. It's like spots, the Game of Thrones thing, and then it yeah. lights up. Yeah. Right. Yep. There you go. And they put or they put the like little little key that it had in the right spot. I'm. You know, I'll I'll say too. Like I, I I don't like when I it doesn't have the name or anything anywhere all the time. I I kind of kind of like that. I don't. Oh, you don't. I kind of like having you're like hey guys i can't remember what yeah, your like, album what is, is this? called yeah, like, <laughs> i'm an idiot i need to search for your album on <laughs> spotify like <laughs> what is this maybe that was uh that was on purpose yeah could be. um cyclona warped vision so cyclone with a psych and a cyclona so it's feminine f- form and there's paint <laughs> coming out of his head you know, i was thinking like it's a a psych yeah a psychotic Psychotic cyclone. Uh, a psychotic cyclone. But a well, female but cyclone. A female. A female cyclone <laughs> that's psychotic. Cyclone. Warped vision. It sounds like a bad wrestler's name. Cyclona. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a it's female the, it's crazy a female, wrestler. Maybe that's what that is. And the, she wears really cool colors. That's the music she comes yeah, out she to. Yeah, she comes out to Cyclona. <laughs> and she, maybe this is a theme album. Yeah. yeah. See, that's Warped what it is. Warped vision from Cyclona. Or Cyclona. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Very good. Um, Richie Kotzen, Nomad. That's boring, Richie. Yeah, there he is Come in on, Mariposa. Like, I get it. You're trying to be like there? a nomad up there in the woods but or in the mountains. But. It's a little bit. And that sweater. You could have done better I mean, with that. Come on. This pullover. And he's so like, last yeah, season. I like how it's reflecting. I do. I, I, do. Like <laughs> I don't know if he talks like that. I'm but. a fucking nomad. 
I walk wherever I want to. What is he wearing too? What is this? That's like it, a it looks, shawl? Well, yeah, it's like one of. That's what I was gonna say. Like that. Like a pullover robe. It looks very, like a bathrobe. Like, it's so <laughs> like in the future. You're right. Right. He's, this is what he they just wear got the off future. the hollow deck wow. on Star Trek. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <He> was, he, <laughs> yes. Yes. We're so mean. He's actually. When did we get so mean? He's actually 20, 25 years old from Logan's Run. Yeah. And so he, yeah, yeah, he yeah. escaped Logan's Run and he's living his life now as an old person. Meanwhile, this is the best if, album of music ever he, made. If he holds up his hand, it'll have the little jewel in his hand. The it'll jewel. be blinking. Right. Telling him his time is up. Your time is up. Goodbye. Right. Well, that was great. I'm glad we went down that. Yeah. Hole. Here's another Ripped one. Ripped to you, shreds. You're going to love this. Sanshi. Yeah. Whoa. So look at all Whoa. this that's going on here. Okay. So we've got like a Chinese emperor mm-hmm. with like the uh, demon. The demon. And I mean, they're. There's the album is called Sanshi, Sanshi right? It's, yeah. it's like a Chinese word. Yeah. Um, and there, but then there's like these little Arabian parapets and fo- like, whoa, is this, there's this like is people, hell? This yeah. is like ch- I think Chinese is, hell, yeah. maybe? And then it's like, there's like the sacrifice area. Good and gosh. And then there's like uh, the, the, the damn folks who souls. are like, yeah, they're like getting ready to walk up there. But how come the stairs like are down below? They're like up above. The stairs oh, are yeah. coming That's from down below. Maybe this is like a waiting area. Like purgatory. Yeah, they have to, or they have to sit there and watch. Or they get a ticket. They get a number. Oh. And he calls the number. And he calls the number. It's the waiting place. And is that water? Is that flesh and water then, that's yeah, all and filled they in got there? A soup, they got a soup they bar got a over soup here. Bar. <laughs> that's the And there's like, a buffet. Oh, this salad bar doesn't yeah. even have croutons. <laughs> <laughs> I found a band-aid in my <laughs> salad. <laughs> that is hell. That would be the dif- <laughs> definition. That's a pretty cool album, though. I gotta say, it's uh, like, it looks pretty. I mean, I like you know, it's. Yeah, it's given me a lot of uh, things to talk about. <laughs> a, there's a lot going. And on And I there. like that it was probably commissioned some artist. Yeah, you yeah. Know? There's the little thing down there. The yeah, uh, I like that. Thing. That's cool. Yeah, right on. So there you go. Serious Black, <laughs> Rise of Akhenaten, <laughs> like what? We were already talking about Harry Potter, and then I don't like, know, now man. they literally have Sirius Black as the name of a. Yeah. And then Akhenaten, isn't that where uh, Harry Potter had to go rescue Sirius Black from? <laughs> is he a prisoner in Akhenaten? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the prisoner of Akhenaten. That's no, the... I mean really that now they're just taking like Pharaoh's names and besmirching them. I don't know. It, this is Pharaoh like, blasphemy. This is, this is blasphemy. <laughs> Sirius Black. Yeah, I don't know, man. Man, a lot. You got you do you, Serious Black, but I don't I don't know about that. Serious Black. I think they're trying to say that this is um like a, like a robot or something maybe? Like it looks like oh, it's Oh yeah, being yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like the electricity. Okay, so what we're getting here is like a sort of a Stargate kind right. of like uh action. Oh, this is Ancient Aliens. <laughs> it's, it's, it is. We got it Ancient is. Aliens. This must be the the house band. Okay, Ancient I got to say though, <laughs> the more I watch um the uh what's the name of that television show? Um 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> oh yeah. I, the more I'm starting to believe that there is a significant proportion of our population that believes in aliens like and that this is like beca- like ancient aliens is really becoming like a religious mu- movement. Yeah, oh yeah, no. That they're like I don't believe in I don't believe in God <laughs> or whatever. And I'm like, could you just maybe do a skip to just be like, yeah, there's no God and it's just like there is no God, but then it's like no, it has to be aliens. I like how you've seen this on 90 Day Fiance more than once. <laughs> there's like crazy. multiple people on that show that are like I don't believe in God, I believe in aliens, aliens and yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Wild, man. All right, fine. It's kind of crazy how that's like the mainstream Kind of it's way like of you got now. either Christianity or ancient aliens. <laughs> like that's, that's something else. That's your that's only choices. All right. What else we got? Surge Tanky and Foundations EP. That's that's uh looks like Jackson Pollock, but better. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's yeah, probably I don't mind that. That's his pretty cool uh, his looking. own artwork, I'm guessing. Yeah. I don't know. Uh maybe he's into painting these days. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh vinyl looks cool too. So which which when it's just an artist doing artist stuff. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Um, Turbo Kill Champion. <laughs> Whoa, dude! There's a lot going on. Like here. windy tentacle. Yeah, drapery. angel wings. 
And then like the the, the tur- wow. Champion. So what is going on She's here? She's Mary, is isn't she? I think that's a guy. Is it a guy? Dang it! Why does he have hey, like? Well, the, he has like a like a muscular. A yeah, chest plate on there. Yeah, he's, he's like a conquistador, and his legs are very. <laughs> so why is he? Why does he have like a habit on? Why is he a nun? <laughs> well, he's uh, the anointed one. I of guess some kind. so. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a great. Maybe point. he's the uh, the champion for that we all needed. I gotta say, there's been a lot of thunder. In yeah, the a artwork, lot of thunder this week. Uh, this week of of these a lot albums. of lightning and thunder. A lot of lightning and thunder going on. It's. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. All right, I think that's it for the album. That it? That's oh, okay. it. That's it. All righty. That's it for us, guys. Uh, rocknewsweekly.com. As always, all the socials at Rock News Weekly, Twitch, and YouTube. Give us a like and a follow, and we'll see you next week. Have a good one. All right. Peace. See you later. Bye bye.